Today we have some partnerships to take a look at, new ones just coming before the end of the quarter. Today, of course, being the last day of Q2, June 30th. And let's just take a look at the stock. We also have some events to talk about. I'm recording intraday here. As of almost quarter to 12, Palantir stock is up on the day, shaking off some losses from yesterday. I think some people forgot the stock could go down, but we are moving past that. Reaching higher on Wednesday, June 30th, just a little bit intraday. And I did miss this before because I recorded before the news broke, but Arc W actually did sell 21,000 shares. 21,000 shares approximately being worth about $27. It's not a very large sell, only about half a million dollars sold, but it is wise of ARC, I believe, as they are fiduciaries. They're responsible for the performance of the funds. If a stock goes up a tremendous amount, as we've seen from Palantir in the last month especially, it is wise to take some off the table and reinvest back in at a lower amount. And ARC actually does not have to pay capital gains for trading, which is something set up for an ETF, which is why they're able to trade and generate alpha in that regard. It's not something I recommend, but it is something that they are able to do. So not a big sell, but I did want to recognize that coming from ARK Invest. And also another story before we get going with the substantial news for today and the previous days, Palantir filed another patent. I won't pretend to know what it means, but the description is a malicious activity detection system capable of efficiently processing data access from databases and generating alerts for display in interactive user interfaces. So I'm not entirely sure what that means. I'll leave the link to the abstract here if you want to continue to read up on it. But I also found this resource that Jake Yu was referencing yesterday during our conversation together, which has a good number of Palantir's patents, what they mean, and the frequency that they are released and such. I will perhaps dive more into this later, but I think it's a useful resource, so I also link it in the description. So now with the news that we saw a day or two ago, Microsoft and Sampo are investing $25 million in the GM and Palantir-backed startup Weijo. So of course we already knew that Palantir was buying into this SPAC. That is not new news, but what is new is understanding that Microsoft the big player here is joining Palantir and General Motors as part of Weijo's investment into the pipe financing, which we've talked about before, standing at a total of $125 million. So Weijo actually organizes data from, they say, almost 11 million vehicles connected to the internet for clients such as GM, no surprise there, Hyundai, and then Daimler. So here we are over on Business Wire, the release summary saying Weijo, a global leader in, in connected vehicle data, today announced that it has joined forces with Microsoft, Palantir, and Sampo Holdings. So why am I bringing this up? What does this really mean? We already have talked about the partnership between Palantir and Weijo. So what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that Microsoft is coming on board and perhaps means there's a secondary, a second degree, if you will, partnership between Palantir and Microsoft. This also lends some credit to the idea that this is a company worth investing in if Microsoft is taking some money to invest. So Microsoft, of course, having the very successful Azure software, which will be now helping Weijo in their efforts. So overall, along with Microsoft helping out Weijo, which subsequently helps out Palantir's investment in them, I also think it's good to have Microsoft and Palantir potentially in talks together. I'm not sure if there has ever been a potential partnership between the two, but now they are working together at least in some capacity, which is no doubt a good deal for the smaller company, Palantir, to be working with one of the largest, most successful companies in the world, Microsoft, as we all know them. Moving on, we have Sachin on Twitter here, another great Twitter account that you must follow if you're into Palantir. Retweeting this tweet from January saying that today from the FDIC, we have announced 11 companies eventually, which they have not announced yet, for their rapid phase prototyping contest. And so someone asked him if Palantir is one of the 11. He responded by saying, I think so. We know it is participating and it's not yet in past companies section on the FDI FDIC website. We should hear soon in an official press release in the coming days. So this is perhaps something to look forward to. I said the event yesterday with the FDIC was not what I was personally looking to 
due for an announcement there, but I definitely think this is right up Palantir's alley if they are to get a partnership, an official one, with the FDIC in this capacity. So let's stay tuned for that. Now we do have an actual official partnership. This is an extension of a prior partnership with Grupo Globo, and they've extended their partnership for another two years. This kind of reminds me of the partnership between Palantir and Ringier. This is more of a company looking to switch to a digital first global media company and Palantir is helping them to achieve that. So once again, we have a video published by Palantir here to help describe what the partnership is all about. So first, let's take a look at the article here by Business Wire, published as the breaking news here. So Grupo Global, Latin America's largest media company, relies on Palantir Foundry to harness data across its multiple channels and enhance connections with its daily audience of 100 million viewers. They announced that they have extended their partnership for two years. Globo originally teamed up with Palantir in 2019 to use its Foundry software, which transforms the way organizations operate by creating a central operating system for their data, leading to better decisions across the enterprise. So without going into any more details, I do want to play this video, but actually I'm going to narrate it since they actually only added the captions and not the nar narration. So hopefully this will be better for your enjoyment since you can just look at the screen and listen to my narration. So let's get started. Globo has a unique advantage in Brazil. We have linear TV channels, paid TV channels, and digital, which are highly relevant to the Brazilian public. The partnership with Palantir has helped Globo tremendously. In our journey to become a digital media tech company, digital literacy is one of the most critical success factors to this endeavor. I would highlight three main points from our partnership with Palantir. The first point is the power of the platform. Palantir Foundry, which has permeated through our day-to-day -day operations. We are able to ingest countless data sources into a single repository, a source of truth. We created an enterprise ontology, streamlining the usage of advertising data by the business. But more importantly, we are able to apply the knowledge of our data scientists to create insights and valuable services for our advertisers. With Palantir, we are able to join and process highly granular consumption information that we collect. Across our digital products, we are able to transform data into intelligence and better understand the preferences of the community we serve. The second point worth highlighting in our partnership are the new products that we have created. We created a competitor dashboard to better understand the advertising investment strategy at scale for thousands of advertisers within Palantir Foundry. We are able to analyze which distribution channels would produce the highest ROI for a given advertising campaign, combining linear TV, paid TV, and digital. And finally, the third point, which I think is the most important thing. This partnership really created an environment that is more conducive of the type of digital transformation we are aiming for. Being able to change the team's mindset around decisions and how decisions should be made using data was one of the biggest gains we had with the partnership. We managed to accelerate the cultural transformation at Globo by partnering with Palantir. So there you have it, just wrapping up this video here. I emailed IBM because I was not able to find a recording for the event they had yesterday, the demonstration, Palantir Cloud Pack for Data, which I was pretty much looking forward to. So I'll let you know if I get a response on that. Hopefully I will be able to share it. And also just wrapping up today, we have the 2021 Global Public Sector Partner Awards. Palantir, and this is for AWS, Palantir is taking place, having an event at 2.30 to 3 p.m., which I will subsequently publish a Supercut video for, so look out for that. And with that, that's all the news I have to share today. It looks like Palantir stock pretty much just having a flat day today. We'll see where it closes the rest of the week. This is, again, the last day of the quarter, so it's good to see they got another partnership under their belt for Q2, but that's all I've got for you. Some more long-form content is coming your way, so stay tuned for that. Until next time.